Good morning, everybody. Could you all stand and join in with me for prayer? For this is the day that the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad in it. Amen. Come on, let's give the Lord a hand clap of praise and just begin to honor his name for allowing us to be in this place for the 12th month to partake of his broken body and shed blood. just to give thanks God God we thank you for waking us up God we thank you for starting us on our day allowing us to come to this place again another Sunday just to give your name honor and glory God we come expecting something great from you today God God we just praise you in advance God because we know that signs and wonders you're going to allow us to see God we're claiming it right now God God we know that your anointing is already here God we just ask that you let it fall fresh on us God flow through our hearts, our minds, our spirits, God, allow us to see yokes broken, God, allow us to see burdens lifted, God, allow us to see relationships put back together, God, sick bodies healed, God, crazy minds back on a level place, God, we just thank you right now, God, because we know that you'll do it for us, God, if we ask you, God, we'll do it for you, say, ask anything in, our, in your name and you will give it to us, God. We just ask you right now, God, you already know what we want before we ask, God. But we know you want us to open up our mouths and just ask you, God. So we're asking you, God, just to allow your glory just to settle here, God. Settle in this place, God. Just touch every each and every person in this building, God. Every family represented, God. We ask that you bless them right now in the name of Jesus, God. God, those who are worshiping virtually. God, those who are on their way, God. As they dot that door, God, we ask that you bless them right now in the name of Jesus, God. God, we just thank you right now. We thank you for this place called the Emmanuel Temple, God, where we can worship freely, God, where we can grow in you, God, where we can learn more about you, God. God, where we have the desire, God, and have the wants to be more like you, God. We just thank you, God. We thank you for our leaders right now, God. We thank you for the vision that you have given them, God, and we thank Thank you for allowing us to see you and them so that we may follow the vision and run on with them to see what the end is going to be, God. God, we bind anything that is not like you, God. God, we ask that you forgive us for all of our sins, God, and that we have committed knowingly, God, and unknowingly, God. God, anything that tries to come against us in this place, God, we bind it, God. We stop it in its tracks, God. Even before it forms, God, we, we bind it right now in the name of Jesus, God, because we know that the enemy is not welcome here, God. This is your house, God. And we thank you, God. We thank you. God, if I had 10,000 tongues, I could thank you enough because you're just that good. God, you're just that kind. God, and I bless your name every time I think about what you've done for me. God, how you saved me. God, how you kept me out of harm's way. I can't help but praise your name this morning. Hallelujah. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. God, and we will be so ever careful to give your name all the praise, all the honor, all the glory in Jesus' name. It is so. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. You are holy, oh, so holy. worthy oh so worthy 
Come on and lift your worship this morning if you know he's worthy. You are worthy. Oh, so worthy. What a privilege and an honor to worship at your throne. To be called into your presence. Search the earth below, but the 
in this season of Advent. first Sunday in December, the first Sunday in Advent, if we may all please stand, amen. If we may all please stand if you can. Amen. The people who walked in darkness have seen a great light. Those who lived in a land of deep darkness on them, light has shined. For a child has been born for us, a son given to us. Authority rests upon his shoulders, and he is named Wonderful Counselor, Mighty God, Everlasting Father, Prince of Peace. Today, we remember the prophets of old who demanded to be heard, who dared to speak of a child to come, unexpected liberator of the people, vulnerable incarnation of the holiest of holies, a new name for God. We give thanks to the prophets among us who bring to us the surprising new vision of hope. Shows us to think outside the box. Shows us a future we never anticipated. On this first Sunday of Advent, we light this candle as a symbol of the prophets who renew our faith and remind us of what we may be. Amen. You may be seated. Come on, let's put our hands together and give God some praise. Um, my brothers and sisters, as this is the day, the first Sunday in the season of Advent, we thank uh, uh, these preachers standing in the gap, Trey and Joey were supposed to share in the liturgy today, but they are both homesick and their mother is home taking care of them. Uh, and so uh, we're grateful. I'm not going to call y'all rams in the bushes because the rams got slain. Uh, so we thank God for uh, these preachers. Somebody ought to say amen. Uh, my brothers and sisters, uh, don't forget about all the announcements of the day and of the week. Again, if you are interested in going to Greece and Italy with me uh, as we retrace the steps of Paul in June, our meeting is tomorrow uh, at 6.30 p.m. And then a week from uh, Monday, uh, tomorrow, we will be having our vision night church conference uh, and would encourage everyone to join us uh, as we unveil our goals and objectives, our church calendar, uh, and our areas of focus for uh, this new conference year. Uh, my brothers and sisters, uh, again, let me encourage you uh, today, we're going to send a link out again, a text out as far as our Christmas LOL and inviting you and encouraging you to share as we um, for this the fourth year uh, we will be blessing uh, homeless brothers and sisters in Dade and in Broward counties with homeless survival kits and we need you to help us to um, not only purchase those things but as we're going to get closer toward Christmas day uh, to stuff those bags we will meet here at the church 7 a.m. on Christmas morning rain, sleet, snow or shine uh, as we disseminate uh, bags in Dade and Broward counties. We'll give out instructions and sending teams to Fort Lauderdale and Hollywood and downtown Miami and all parts in between where our homeless brothers and sisters reside. Reminding ourselves that Jesus was homeless because the Bible says that foxes had holes and birds had nests. And the Son of Man had no place to lay his head. So before we open any gift, um, we're going to give a gift um, because the Bible says, be careful uh, who you entertain. You just may be entertaining angels. And so we want to be a blessing. And so we need your help. So I look forward to sharing with you. Uh, don't forget uh, an announcement to start scrolling on the screens for all the announcements of the day and of the week and govern yourselves accordingly. Let me ask everybody to stand. Everybody to stand. Go hug somebody you haven't spoken to look them in the eye hug them real tight uh, put a smile on your face go all the way to the back of the church and say God loves you and so do I come on everybody stand go find somebody to hug tell them God loves you and so do I
brothers and sisters, let me encourage you to join us uh, today at 9 a.m. between services uh, as we continue in our I Grow Groups, our Sunday morning joy time, three different opportunities for learning. Uh, one class is studying the book of Romans. Uh, another class is uh, for married couples, and it is reading a book called... Um, Sacred marriage, what happens if God designed marriage to make, not to make us happy, but to make us holy. Uh, and then the third group uh, is for singles, and it's called the arm, studying a book called The Armor of God by putting on the whole armor of God. And if you work where some of the places I think you work, you might need to learn how to put on the what? Whole armor of God. Uh, and so uh, from 9 till about 9.50 every Sunday morning, I would encourage you to join us uh, to share in that time of study. I promise you it will bless your life. It's offering time, my brothers and sisters. Come on, won't you put your hands together and give God some praise. If you need an offering envelope, raise your hand. The ushers would be glad to give you one. Uh, let me also encourage those who are worshiping virtually uh, that it's a great place to sow into. Uh, and we are a tithing church. You've already heard me if you've been worshiping with us already this morning about for the last four years about um, blessing homeless brothers and sisters with survival kits and we're in the midst of our Christmas LOL. I'm encouraging everyone to put the Lord's house on your Christmas wish list as we're going to be a blessing to needy children all over the world, uh, orphans uh, in Haiti as well as in Swaziland, Southern Africa, and homeless kids here in Dade and Broward counties. And so we want to encourage you to join us. You just simply, whether you're worshiping virtually, and um, you can give right now on our website, theit.org, or on the app, The Emmanuel Temple. Uh, there is a Christmas LOL opportunity there. Uh, and if you're in the sanctuary, just write on one of those offering envelopes on the bottom lines, Christmas LOL, whatever the Lord lays on your heart to give to the Lord's house on for Christmas. Because we can give to a whole lot of other po people and a whole lot of other things for Christmas. Christmas, but what are we going to do for the Lord's house? Somebody ought to say amen. So what are we going to give today? Come on, let's put it in our right hand. Let's lift it up to the Lord. You know what I'm going to say? The day is not your day. Praise God that Friday is coming. Gracious, wonderful, kind, and merciful God, we thank you just for the opportunity to be alive today. Now, God, we thank you for bringing us to the first Sunday in the last month of the year. God, we know it was not because of any goodness of our own, but it was only because of your grace and your mercy. And so, God, we are grateful. And so, God, we ask that you would move on the hearts of those who are in the sanctuary, of those who are worshiping virtually, who want to tithe. Um, but just don't believe they can. Increase their faith right now, God. Starve their doubts. God, move on their hearts to give to a purpose that is bigger than they are. Give to an entity, God, that can do things that they can't do on their own. And so, God, we ask, God, that you would move, God, in our midst, God, that you would rebuke the devourer, God, that you would uh, come against the spirit of stinginess, God, whether it's in the sanctuary or whether it's those who are worshiping virtually, God, that they may give back to you, God, not giving to get, God, but giving to be a part of bringing your kingdom here on earth 
as it is in heaven. God, you've done so much for us, we cannot tell it all. And so, God, we want to give because you are a giver and you gave first and you gave your best gift and that was your son, Jesus the Christ. And we ask it all in the name of Jesus. Press these gifts of tithes and offerings down, shake them together and run them over so that your kingdom may come here on earth as it is in heaven. In the name of Jesus the Christ, we pray. And all those who love the Lord said, Amen. And we know that God loves a God loves a God loves a everybody won't you stand face the outside walls won't you come down and place your gifts of times and offerings in these baskets sanctuary on the wall uh, there are two trees called the tree of thanks and during this altar call I want to encourage you uh, uh, there will be preachers here um, right in front of the altar that if you want to take a leaf and write what you're thankful for uh, and tape it to the tree during the altar call I think this will be a great time it's oftentimes we come to church asking God to do things for us but never telling God thank you for what he's already done and so I believe today is a good day to say thank you to the Lord uh, thank you for just waking us up early this morning as old folks would say and starting us on our way thank you for the activity of our limbs thank you as the old folks would say that our beds were not our cooling boards and our sheets were not our winding sheets somebody who grew up in the church old school knows what I'm talking about uh, somebody could just thank God for just uh, food on their table this morning and clothes on their backs and a roof over your head and anybody want to thank the Lord for a car to drive or a ride to get to church or worshiping virtually or completely computer or a laptop or an iPad or a phone to worship virtually and so we have so much to be thankful for so I, today I, I don't want us to ask God for anything but I just want us to tell God thank you because the Bible says God inhabits the praises of his people what would happen if we just start telling God thank you would, it, would we be so focused on what's wrong and what's going on I know stuff is bad but if we just tell the Lord thank you we don't know what God might do uh, as he moves in our midst so as uh, as our psalmist is leading us uh, I want to just I want to encourage you to tell the Lord thank you uh, those who are worshiping virtually post on your wall post on the chat uh, just tell the Lord what you are thankful for. Uh, I want to encourage you to keep, uh, we all know we've been praying all week about our brothers and sisters who are, um, are are going through times of trials and tribulation. I'm thanking the Lord that one of our members, 47 years old, was driving from work, had a heart attack, uh, was able to pull over and call 911 and uh, had a two emergency surgeries but three days later walked out of the hospital that's a good thing to be thankful for 
works out every day and still had heart attacks and we've got to do better with our health somebody ought to say amen and so my brothers and sisters as uh, our psalmist lead us uh, I want to encourage you Reverend Franklin and Aiden is there uh, to give you a leaf and a sharpie whatever you want and somebody else is going to be there to, with some tape uh, so you can post on the tree of thanksgiving the tree of thanks either one and tell the Lord what you are thankful for let's keep um Reverend Franklin and Aiden lifted in prayer we're thankful that uh sister uh uh, Desiree is doing well and is um, rolling on as she is now an officer in the U.S. Army. Somebody ought to say amen. And so, uh, so the altar is now open for you to come as uh, our psalmist lead us.
so much to be thankful for. For life, health, and strength. God, for more importantly, for saving our souls one day. And so, God, help us to focus more on what we should be thankful for than on what we need you to do in our lives. God, you promise us that you would supply all of our needs according to your riches and glory. And so God, if you've promised that, why are we worrying about how you're going to handle things? God, if you promise that if you would take care of the lilies of the field who don't go to work, who've never been to college, how much more will your help, how much more will you do for those who you have made in your image? And so God, why are we anxious for anything? And so God, uh, as we move through this season of Advent, God, saturate us with a presence and a power to be grateful for what you've already done for us and to be in expectation of what you're going to do for us. So God, hide me once again behind the cross and under the drippings of your blood. Give me a new fresh anointing. And we ask it all, Lord, in the name of Jesus the Christ, we pray. And all those who love the Lord say amen. My brothers and sisters, won't you stand on your feet for the reading of God's word? I'm going to an Old Testament passage that we really don't hear a lot about. Zephaniah chapter 3. I want to read in your hearing verses 14 through 20. Uh, and I'm reading from the New Revised Standard Version. Uh, there you'll find these words. Sing aloud, O daughter Zion. Shout, O Israel. Rejoice and exalt with all your heart, O daughter Jerusalem. The Lord has taken away the judgments against you. He has turned away your enemies. The King of Israel, the Lord, is in your midst. You shall not fear disaster no more. On that day, it shall be said to Jerusalem, Do not fear, O Zion. Do not let your hands grow weak. The Lord, your God, is in your midst. A warrior who gives victory, he will rejoice over you with gladness. He will renew you in his love. He will exalt over you with loud singing. As on a day of festival, I will remove disaster from you so that you will not bear reproach for it. I will deal with all your oppressors at that time. And I will save the lame and gather the outcasts. And I will change their shame into praise and renown in all the earth. Verse 20, at that time, I will bring you home that time when I gather you for I will make you renowned and praised among all the peoples of the earth when I restore your fortunes before your eyes says the Lord this is the word of God for the people of God the people said thanks be to God I want to put a tag on this text and I'm going to be preaching of this uh, these verses for this month of uh, for these next few Sundays something to shout about part one won't you turn to your neighbor real quick and say neighbor oh neighbor something to shout about part one we probably don't know him very well his name is Zephaniah he was a Cushite and he was a descendant of Cush, now known as Ethiopia, which is in Africa, which means he was a brother, y'all. Zephaniah was a prophet, one of the minor prophets, not because of a lack of stature, but simply because the size of the book. Zephaniah only has three chapters. Zephaniah prophesied during troubling times in Israel because their worship had grown cold and calculating um, and God's people had forgot about God. It was under this cloud of confusion that God's man lifted God's lifted his voice to speak on behalf 
of the Lord. Zephaniah pins a powerful proclamation in chapter 1. He condemns Jerusalem. In chapter 2, he then condemns the other nations. And in the beginning of chapter 3, he returns to the indictment of Jerusalem with a scathing criticism. It is then that we find our text this morning. It is after the prophet has prophesied gloom and doom, death and decimation that Zephaniah speaks a word from the Lord. It is the man of God that moves from being a bearer of bad news and looks beyond destruction and disease into a situation of hope and restoration. And Zephaniah speaks a word for the weary and gives them something to shout about. Yes, we are very far removed from our text, but how divinely orchestrated that this is that the text we are preaching today in a very similar times and though the calendar has changed the question I raise has it really changed at all the Bible says that there is nothing new under the sun and so here we are in the midst of hearing day after day another brother being brutally lynched excuse me I mean shot by the police in his own home and there is no gun anywhere and the people have to rally just to get the police officer charged day after day we hear of the government that is of the people and by the people and for the people not care for the people slight the people uh, abuse the people and abandon the people day after day we hear about brothers turning on other brothers turning our communities into combat zones day after day there's another school on lockdown because of weapons and violence day after day another lie is told from the White House day after day another atrocity is committed against poor people who we've gone from snatching kids away from parents to now bombing parents with tear gas uh, who are trying to provide a better life for their children it makes you want to holler and throw up both of your hands can I pause for the calls real quick to say maybe the reason that our nation is violent is because it was founded on violence uh, the Boston Tea Party was a violent act our children and young people play video games that are violent our TV shows and movies showcase violence we post videos uh, and we wonder why our nation is violent in the words of Malcolm X the chickens uh, have simply come home to roost uh, because we've highlighted violence in our culture uh, that is turned around to bite us in our gluteus maximus uh, so as we start the season of Advent Advent is a time of waiting in anticipation it's a time of looking for the coming of the Lord for the fulfillment of God God's promise restoration for the peace that overcomes all violence and that love that makes all hatred evaporate like the morning mist. Uh, we might think that focusing our attention on what we long for but do not yet have might be a cause for discouragement rather than joy. Uh, but I just stop by to remind us it's the very act of watching and waiting and looking for the coming of God uh, that inspires great joy. Uh, a while ago when Reverend Maria was out of town I told the boys after I picked them up from school that we were going to do something fun. I didn't tell them what it was what it was but the entire way home they kept asking me daddy where are we going? It didn't matter that they had been in school all day that they hadn't eaten yet the only thing that mattered to them was we were going to do something fun and they kept asking me daddy where are you taking us? Huh? I told them to touch their noses and be quiet huh? but they were so excited about the hope of going somewhere huh, that it didn't matter where it was huh? and so as I stopped by the bank to get some cash out then pulled up to the carnival huh, they couldn't contain themselves because all they saw were the rise and the games and the lights and heard the music that they knew they were going to have fun my beloved and the Lord the boys knew they were going somewhere to have fun huh? and they started talking loud and started saying woohoo and they started jumping up and down because the anticipation of what was about to happen huh, took over them huh? it's something about the waiting that makes us lose focus huh, on what is about 
to happen. Uh, maybe as one of the preachers said one day, uh, his daughter, as she fussed at him because he was too late taking her somewhere, and the preacher responded, well, baby, what were you doing while you were waiting? Uh, if the only thing you were doing was looking out the window and texting me to see where I was, then yes, it was going to take a long time. Uh, but if you were so busy doing something that occupied your mind and your time, uh, it would not have been as long as because you would have not been thinking about where I was huh, because you have been so consumed with where you were doing huh, what you were doing huh, that you wouldn't have been thinking about how long it took me to get home huh. and I believe that word for somebody early this morning huh, if we spent more time huh, being so consumed with praying and fasting and meditating and serving huh, and worshiping and praising and giving huh, we wouldn't be thinking about where we are not huh, because we would be shouting huh, that even where we are huh, right now huh, God has been better than good and I don't know if y'all watched the Alabama versus Georgia game last night. Alabama starting quarterback gets hurt in the fourth quarter. And the backup quarterback comes in and helps lead Alabama back to the win after they were down 14 points. Just in case some don't know, this was the same quarterback in two years who had only lost two games. But the coaches decided to replace him in the second half of the championship game and to replace him in the championship game last year huh, while they were losing and his replacement led the team to victory in overtime. Huh. So all season he waited for his chance. Huh. People told him to transfer but he waited. Huh. People told him he should have been playing but he waited. Huh. People told him to quit but he waited. Huh. Now he wasn't just chilling while he was waiting. Huh. He was working while he was waiting. Huh. He was preparing while he was waiting. Huh. He was studying while he was waiting. Huh. He was going to class so he could graduate early while he was waiting. Huh? So he, he leads the team to the comeback win. Huh? And after the game, the reporter huh, sticks a microphone in his mouth huh, and asks the hard question. And Hurt's response was this. Huh? I was just I just left it huh, in God's hands. Huh? I keep on saying it. Huh? While we are trying to figure it out, huh, God has already worked it out. Huh? I just need to remind someone this morning, huh, have we considered what God has spoken over our lives? Huh? I have plans for you huh, to give you a future with hope. Huh? I am he. Huh? that blocks out all your transgressions uh, and throws them into the sea of forgetfulness. Uh, I will supply uh, all of your needs uh, according to the riches and glory. Uh, I am your refuge and strength, uh, a very present help in the time of trouble. Uh, I will fight your battles. Uh, I will restore your health uh, and heal your wounds. Uh, have we considered uh, what the Lord has told us? Uh, and I know things aren't looking well, uh, but I want to believe uh, I have some folks in the house uh, and more worship and virtue that knows that our latter days will be greater than our former days that God has for us is much better than what God has already given us. I know some folks think that this is a rough season of the year thinking about the loved ones that have gone home to be with the Lord but I just stopped by to remind us this morning be not dismayed whatever be time God will take care of you beneath his wings love about and I believe I have some folks in the house and worshiping virtually that knows that we've made it to the last first Sunday of 2008 and God has taken care of us. God has covered us when we were doing things we should not have been doing. God has cared for us when we didn't care for ourselves or anybody else. God has challenged us to serve more, pray more, praise more, do more, give more, worship more, fast more, study more, and praise more. Somebody ought to just shout more. Pay, pay, pay close attention to the text. Verses 14 and 15. Now let, let, let me, can I read them again in, in your hearing? Because I don't want us to miss it. My brothers and sisters, the text tells us in verse 14, sing aloud, O daughter Zion. Shout, O Israel. Rejoice and exalt with all your heart, O daughter Jerusalem. The Lord has taken away the judgments against you. He has turned 
away your enemies. The king of Israel, the Lord, is in your midst. You shall fear disaster no more. So, so someone needs to know that Zephaniah tells them to rejoice based on what God has already done. You, you, you don't believe me? It's right, right there in the text. When we look closely at the text, we'll know this is an imperative. It's a command. It's not something that they should think about doing. It's not something that they should have to ask somebody about doing. But the text tells us it's necessary. It's something that they must do. Zephaniah is not only telling the children of Israel, but he's speaking to us through the annals of time. Sing aloud who God's people. Sing who those who call themselves the children of God. Sing who the royal priesthood. Sing who the chosen generation. Sing who those who love the Lord. Sing who those who know the Lord has laid his hands on them. The text tells us not only to sing, but also sing aloud. Rejoice and exalt with all your heart. Don't do it as an afterthought with all of, with all of our heart. Don't do it because everybody else is doing it with all of our heart. Don't do it because somebody twisted our arms and made us stand at the beginning of worship, but do it with all of our heart because the text tells us we ought to rejoice with all of our heart. That simply means with everything we have when we don't feel like it, when everything ain't going our way, when our man makes us mad and our woman is working on our last nerves, when we still have presents to purchase, when we folks are acting funny, when nobody else wants to rejoice with all and do it with all of our hearts. Can I tell you why we ought to rejoice with all of our heart? Because of what God has already done. I, I know you don't believe me. It's right there in the text. Keep your phone out. 15 verse, because the Lord has taken away the judgments against you. Let, let, let me hang my hand right there. The Lord has taken away the judgments, which simply means that we are saved saved, bought with the price, saved, redeemed from the death of sin, saved from our messes and mistakes, saved from our foolishness and fear, saved from sins of omission, the stuff we didn't do, saved from the sins of commission, the stuff we did and plotted and planned to do, saved from the sins of submission, the stuff we were too weak not to succumb to, saved from all of our sins yesterday, saved from all of our sins today, saved from our sins that we're going to commit tomorrow, next week, and next year. I don't know about you, but I'm glad I'm saved. Not because of anything I can do, but saved because God has taken away the judgments against you and against me. Anybody glad that you're saved? Anybody glad that hell would not be your home? Anybody glad that God brought us out? Anybody glad that God saved your soul from a burning hell and now you can tell? Anybody glad that Jesus saved from the utmost? He'll pick you up and turn you around and place your feet uh, on solid ground. Uh, somebody ought to just shout hallelujah. Uh, Jesus saves. Uh, anybody else out there besides me? Uh, they're glad that you're saved uh, from eternal damnation. Uh, saved uh, from living the afterlife in the smoking section. Uh, saved uh, from living with Satan forevermore. Uh, I don't know about you, uh, but when I think about where the Lord has brought me from, uh, when I think about I'm not worthy to pastor, uh, when I think that I'm still seen uh, and fall short of the glory of God, uh, when I think about I'm a procrastinator uh, and some people told me I'd never make it uh, when I think about everything I know that I have uh, I don't deserve uh, when I think about the places uh, that I never thought I'd never go uh, and when I think about how the Lord had keeps blessing me uh, over and over uh, when I think if I had been uh, for the Lord who was on my side uh, where would I be uh, I have something to shout about uh, it makes me say Jesus I love you uh, because you first loved me uh, it makes me dance uh, it makes me run. It makes me cry. It makes me hollow. It makes me wave. It makes me shout because I thought about the goodness of Jesus. And I don't know about you, but maybe you don't want to think. Maybe you just want to be told what to do. Maybe you just want to be a robot and program. Maybe you just want to be given things to do and check them off in each task. But when I think, somebody ought to just shout. When I think of the goodness of Jesus and all that he done for me. My soul ought to cry out hallelujah. Somebody ought to just shout thank you. 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 Everybody
understand that we, we gotta get out of here. Somebody gotta get the brunch, we gotta get out of here. We, we, we'll keep staying in this third chapter this month, the next few Sundays, because we all have something to shout about. And there may be someone here worshiping virtually who is does not understand how we can shout even when we got problems how we can shout even when we lost loved ones this year how we can shout even though the very things we thought would never happen to us happen to us how can we shout because we know that there's always another chapter to our story I went to go see Creed the other day Creed 2 I seen Creed 1 I'm not going to tell you the story but the story ends setting us up for Creed 3 my beloved Lord what would you do if you considered that God was setting the enemy up to help the enemy see that you thought you had them but there is another story there is something that's coming that the enemy can't see right now and the enemy just gotta wait and watch it unfold I'm gonna leave you alone sometimes part two happens many years later true story I saw something the other day coming to America part two 20 years after part one I don't know if that's a word for somebody you might have to wait a long time for your part two to come but the, I declare and decree God's word says it's going to come to pass but you got to simply wait on the Lord and be of good courage because he will strengthen thine heart wait I say on the Lord the Bible says they that wait upon the Lord shall renew their strength they shall mount up on wings like eagles they shall run and not be weary they shall walk and not faint wait I say on the Lord what do you have to lose by waiting on him. So there may be someone here in the house worshiping virtually who's not saved, not a member of a church where they're growing in the Lord. I want you to encourage you to take a step out in the aisle. Encourage you to fill out the form online. Become a part of this kingdom movement. Give me a hand. Give God your heart. Give the church your service. Fill out the form to give your life to the Lord to become a part of this kingdom movement uh, can, can we just change the song um, and just want to say thank you Lord for all you've done for me uh, we, 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 can we just play that it should have been us outdoors with no food just a number with a tragic end but you didn't see fit to let any of those things be by your power you keep on keeping me anybody else in the house and worshiping virtual just want to say I just want to thank you Lord for all you've done for me if you're in the house if you're worshiping virtually won't you come and unite with this kingdom movement won't you come Give your life to the Lord. With no food and no clothes, all just alone, without a friend, all just another number with a tragic end. But you didn't see fit to let none of these things be. Cause every day by your power, you keep on keeping me. Thank you, Lord, for all you've done for me. And I want to say thank you, Lord, for all you've done for me. You may be seated. Ushers, won't you come, my brothers and sisters, as we prepare now to uh, receive our gift submission. As you know, you've heard me uh, talk about how uh, the 
Lord continues to bless us and how we've adopted six families, three in Dade and three in Broward, to feed every weekend. How we've adopted two orphanages in Haiti to send them food every month. I want to encourage you to continue to support us in our gifts and mission that allows us to do these things. I want to also encourage you to bring your change for change. Um, if you want to give online, there's a line for change for change. Give submission as the ushers pass those baskets. We are so grateful this month. Our ushers and our greeters uh, are going to be leading in this effort. Come on, let's put our hands together and praise God uh, for these families who are going to be blessed because the Lord has blessed us. Um, my brothers and my sisters, as we prepare now, to share in the Lord's Supper. Uh, so the King, I'm, I'm feeling mighty churchy today. Somebody ought to say amen. Uh, I'm feeling mighty churchy today. Kenya knows that's a tag word. We're going to sing some hymns way down in my soul. She's banned me from singing, but I'm going to mouth the word. Somebody ought to say amen. Uh, okay, y'all don't have to say amen like that. Amen. Uh, okay. Um, but let us share, uh, prepare ourselves to share in the Lord's Supper. A call to the table is simply this. You that do truly and earnestly repent of your sins and are in love and charity with your neighbor. Listen to the key word and intend to live a new life. Following henceforth the commandments of faith. Draw near with faith. These preachers are going to help us uh, share in the Lord's Supper. Um, there is a fountain filled with blood drawn from Emmanuel's veins and sinners plunge beneath the flood lose all guilt and there is power wonder working power in the blood of the lamb there is power power wonder working power in the blood of the Lamb. As the steward has come as we prepare ourselves to share in the Lord's Supper, I want to simply ask that you will stand as we share in a time of sharing our confessions to the Lord. It's the 12th first Sunday of the year. Are we still satisfied being the same person we were the first Sunday in January, first Sunday in February, first Sunday in March, first Sunday in April, first Sunday in May, first Sunday in June, first Sunday in July, first Sunday in August, first Sunday in September, first Sunday in October, first Sunday in November and are we going to continue to keep using this is just the way I am which is anti-gospel because the gospel says that we come one way but we leave another way Amen. if we've been with Jesus we can we still be the same people the old folks would sing a song I looked at my hands and my hands looked new. I looked at my feet and they did too. So before we share in the general confession, I need everybody all heads bowed. God, make us over. Even when we don't want to be made over, God, make us over. God, even if we don't think we got a bad attitude, God, make us over. God, even if we still stuck in a mindset and a mentality of 40, 50 years ago, God, make us over. God, if we're still holding on to grudges happened 10, 20, 30, 40 years ago, God, make us over. God, if we're still acting like we're the only one saved and everybody else going to hell, God, make us over. Get rid of the self-righteousness. Get rid of self-centeredness. Get rid of selfish ways make us over God 
In Jesus' name we pray. We want to be right with you even if that means you got to strip everything away from us. Strip us down, God. Then build us back up into the people that you would have us to be and not the people we've been comfortable being 5, 10, 15, 20, 30, 40, 50 plus years. In Jesus' name we pray. Let the church say amen. Let, let's share together in our general confession. It's shown on the screens. Almighty God, Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, make of all things, judge of all men and women. We acknowledge and bewail our manifold sins and weakness, which we from time to time most grievously have committed by thought, word, and deed against thy divine majesty, provoking most justly thy wrath for indignation against us. We earnestly repent and heartily sorrow for these our misdoings. The remembrance of them is grievous unto us. Have mercy upon us. Have mercy upon us, most merciful Father. For your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ's sake, forgive us all that is past. Grant that we may ever hereafter serve and please thee in the newness of life. To the honor and glory of thy name. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord, let the church say amen. You may be seated in the presence of the Lord. Almighty God, our Heavenly Father, who for your tender mercy did give your only son Jesus Christ to suffer death on the cross for our redemption who made thereby his oblation of himself once offered a full perfect and sufficient sacrifice and oblation and satisfaction for the sins of the whole world and did institute in his holy gospel command us to continue a perpetual memory of that his precious death until his coming again hear us on this last first Sunday of 2018 oh merciful father we most humbly beseech you and grant that we receiving these your creatures of bread and wine according to your savior our, according to your son our savior Jesus Christ holy institution in remembrance of his death and passion may be partakers of his most blessed body and blood who in the same night that he was betrayed Took bread and when giving thanks he broke it and gave it to his disciples saying take eat this is my body broken for you this do in remembrance of me likewise after supper he took the cup when he gave it thanks he gave it to them saying drink all of it because this is the blood of the new testament which is shared for you and for many for the remission of sins. Do this as often as you shall and drink it in remembrance of me. So on this last opportunity in 2018 to eat of your broken body and to drink of your shed blood. God, I just want to say thank you for all you've done me. Take it. Eat it with thanksgiving in my heart. Take and drink because I know there's still power to cover a multiplicity of sins. There's still power because there's wonder working power in the blood. Not just any blood. But the blood of a lamb that had never been slain. The blood of one who knew sin, who knew no sin, but took on all of my sins. One who had no hangups, but took on all of my hangups. Thank you, God, for your blood. Because without any shedding of blood, there would be no remission of sins. I take and drink thanksgiving in my heart. Everybody, uh, I'm going to share in the benediction when I ask that you would receive communion on your way going out the door. Um, Reverend Natalie and Reverend uh, 
Franklin to stand on. Everybody, let's stand. God, our prayer as we move through this season of Advent is to make us over. Help us to see, God, that old things have passed away. Behold, all things have become new. God, birth something new in us in this season of Advent. Because Advent means something new is coming forth. And so, God, do it for us. We give your name, praise, glory, and honor. Because you are the only wise God. All glory. All power. All honor. Belongs to you. And you alone. And you are the only wise God. That can do for us what we can't do for ourselves. So God. Make us pregnant with possibilities this month. God, when we feel like giving up, God, push us to birth the newness that you want to birth in us. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Have a blessed week in the Lord. Have a blessed week in the Lord.